Hey everyone, Ken here with Ken's Creations and Product Reviews. I'm really excited to show you one of my new favorite product, Ken Oliver's Color Burst. Let's go ahead and take a look at the colors. So what are Ken Oliver Color Burst? Well, first of all, they're amazing and produce beautiful results. They are a microfine concentrated powder and when you use them with water, it activates. You can make them in a spray, apply it with a wet brush, or sprinkle it directly on a wet surface. Now you can speed up the drying process by using a heat tool. However you use these, they make dynamic, beautiful projects. Let's take a look at the different colors currently they come in. You have alizarin crimson, which is kind of a red color, orange, lemon yellow, tallow green, ultramarine blue, and violet. Now currently there is just six colors and I recommend if you do see them to snatch them up because they are going quick and it took me a while to get all six colors. Now in this video I want to show you six different ways to use this exciting new product and how easy it is to use it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if it's something that you want to add to your craft room. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first and most popular way of using this. On my color sheet here you can see is the traditional way of using the color burst and it's really really simple. Now before you get started uh, there's a couple things you might want. You would definitely want a mess mat here as I like to call them so that way you can do an easy cleanup. You're going to need some sort of spray bottle. I use baby wipes, a cloth, and then you can also use the heat gun here to go ahead and uh, dry faster. And then you also have some paint brushes to move around your color burst. So let's go ahead and do our first one here. And I'm using just some watercolor paper and I'm gonna go ahead and get it pretty wet. And it doesn't take much, as you can see, as soon as I kind of put this on there, that is just a little bit of sprinkles and you can see it just beautiful, goes crazy. And that was the red. Let's go ahead and put some purple in there. Now, I will say some of the colors come out a lot quicker than the other colors. So you might want to kind of test it out before you go crazy. Because as I said, it doesn't take much. Now at this point, you could go ahead and start using your heat gun to go ahead and dry it. You can go ahead and move around some of your colors. As you can see there, it's kind of making the burst go crazy. You can also add a little bit more water if you want to get a better coverage. And another fun thing is you can go ahead and use either a foam brush or a paint brush to get your colors to move around. So here is the first way to use the color burst. As you can see, it produces just a beautiful look of mixture colors. I absolutely love it. Now I want to show you kind of a second way to use the color burst. Now I use these for kind of a airbrush look here. Now how you're going to achieve this is you're going to go ahead and get a mini mister here. You can get these at Michael's or Joann's. Fill it up with water and then you're going to use about five to six drops of your color burst. Now the more drops you put in your water, obviously you're going to get a more vibrant color. And then you just want to go ahead and make sure you shake it pretty vigorously to get all of your powder to dissolve. And as you can see, it just produces beautiful results and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do it. Once you go ahead and get your watercolor paper here and you're just going to go ahead make sure when you spray your spring at the paper and the further away you get you're going to get more coverage of course on your paper. The closer is going to give you more of a dramatic look and we're just going to go around and just spray everywhere on the paper here. Now of course color combinations um, the only thing I will advise on this is don't go too wild I know I'm just giving you guys some ideas here but Obviously your colors will mix and if you have too much water on there, it basically turns to a beautiful brown. All right, 
So there here is just a quick example of how easy that is. Now once you have your stencil on, you can go ahead, push it down, and we're gonna go ahead and just spray on the watercolor paper. Just like that. We're gonna move this up, and you have a beautiful, nice stencil there. You're gonna have a little bit left on your stencil here. So what's great is to go ahead and take another piece of paper and just go ahead and place it on that stencil and push down nice and firm. Now I usually do this with every single stencil I use because I don't want that color burst to be wasted. And then I'll cut it down for my project or my scrapbook, whatever I'm using it for. Once you get a nice impression, you can go ahead and lift up and as you can see, you have a beautiful impression negative from your first one. So this is just spraying through it and then don't waste any of that color burst, lay it on your stencil after you're done and you get this. And then I would just cut it down. And once they're dry, as you can see, here's two more examples of orange, green, and yellow and the negative stencil. So that's another fun way to use color burst, but let's get even more creative and show you some other ways you can use this exciting product. For our next technique, we're gonna go ahead and do what I call my vinyl technique. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a piece of vinyl in whatever shape you want. We're gonna adhere it to the watercolor paper and then we're gonna go ahead and apply our color burst. And as you can see, it's gonna provide you with a very concentrated color because the vinyl that's adhered to the paper lets the water pool and then you're gonna go ahead using your heat gun, dry that water. This does take a while, so I'll speed up the video, but it just produces beautiful results. Now you wanna to try to get your vinyl to your paper as strong of a bond, but you don't want it to rip the paper also, because if you don't, your color burst will kind of go and leak underneath of it. So I've went ahead and cut my vinyl here, and I've went ahead and adhered it already. You wanna make sure it's down nice and tight. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to dry, add a little bit of your color burst. Now I like to take a foam brush with it and move around my color burst so that way it gets it nice and evenly distributed. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and spray our water on. Now, if you want it more concentrated in certain areas, as you can see, I don't have a lot right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my color burst color and add a few more there and just wet it down again. Now, once we get to this point, this is kind of where it does take a little bit of time because we're actually going to now take our heat gun and go over this a lot and we're gonna be drying each individual area. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up while we dry it, and you can go ahead and watch along. So you just wanna make sure all of your areas are dry. And as you can see, I have a few more wet areas. And if it starts curling up on you, like you see here, you can simply just turn it over and flatten it out by doing the other side. And there you go. As you can see, you get a nice dynamic colors there. So what I love about this is it mixes the colors and you just get a wide variety of colors based on just two different colors. So it would be a beautiful background for a card or a project, anything. So it is one of my favorite techniques using it and all you need is vinyl and a heat gun. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next technique and how you can use color burst. So for the next technique, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at stamping and using the color burst. Now this is a great way, cause as you can see by using a stamp, embossing powder and then heating it up, you're going to get your stamp as a vibrant white with your color burst behind it. And it's really easy to do. 
So let's go and get started. We're gonna start with our watercolor paper and then we're gonna take our stamp and we're gonna go ahead and make sure we get a nice coverage of our embossing ink. Once you have a good coverage on there, we're gonna go ahead and heat this up, make sure to get all the areas and get it nice and adhere to your cardstock. We're gonna let it cool for just a second and then we're gonna go ahead and wet the entire card and use our color burst. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add just some color burst on there. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot. And as you can see, it just really pops off that page. And as it dries, you're gonna see it blends more with the colors. So as this dries, air dries, these yellows are gonna pop more and the purples are gonna get more deep. So it's a great way to go ahead and use this medium to give you a nice vibrant stamp with that white embossing. One of the easiest way to use color bursts and give it a completely different look is to go ahead and paint with them. Real simple, all you're going to do is fill a little container full of water, drop in your color burst, mix it up, and then you can go ahead and start painting with them. Now I went ahead and used my watercolor paper and stays on jet black ink and stamped this one here. And all you're gonna do is take whatever colors you want and they do mix a little bit, so you just wanna keep that in mind and start painting. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the blue. It'll soak into my brush and then I'm just going to gently go over the entire area that I want, of course, blue. So there is a quick coloring job on the butterfly. I'm going to do the flowers here. Now, what you wanna do is clean your brush in between, but if you don't get it all, that's okay, because you do want your colors, as you can see here, they start to mix with each other, which gives it a nice look when it's mixing like that and it dries beautifully. I'm gonna do the same thing with these flowers down here, just dipping them in each of my colors and having it slight mix. Now, I'll be honest, once again, I don't clean my brush very well in between the colors because I do want it to kind of mix there, so. So there you go, as you can see, it's going to slightly mix down here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but my blue, purple, and red are all mixing. My blue's going into my red a little bit, and I absolutely love that. It just gives it a really cool look, and it's a fun way to go ahead and paint with your color burst. Over here, I went ahead and let it air dry, and you can just see a little bit of the mixture of color. So once again, just like anything else, the more drops you put in there, the more vibrant your colors are going to be. You can also go re back over it and reapply some more water to give it more of a deep color to it. So just another way that you can use color burst. And I wanna show you guys just one more way that I use color burst and just how versatile these things are. Let's take a look. So the last technique I'm gonna show you is using Ranger's Texture Paste and stencils. So what I've done is I've went ahead and taken my color burst in any color, mixed in a little bit with that texture paste, and using stencils, as you can see right here, I go ahead and put that plaster on and let it air dry. Now there's a couple different techniques I did. This first one I actually went ahead and put the paste on just as white, so I did not add any color, and then I sprinkled my color burst on let it sit for about 15 minutes and then gently sprayed it with water. And what that did is it gave it a really concentrated color burst in these diagonal shapes and then the color burst ran down in between. So I really liked how this one turned out. On this one here, I did the same thing, but I actually did it in different colors. So you have your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And then I, of course, mixed it in a little bit to just give it that real vibrant colors. But what I'm gonna show you is using this and a metal stencil 
and we're going to go ahead and use green and yellow this time and we're going to go ahead and put that plaster on there so there is one in circles and then we have a purple flower one now what i like about this technique is it gives it a little bit of dimension so if you run your fingers over it you can definitely tell and the colors are super super bright vibrant and there is no watercolor look to it so very simple we're going to start with a watercolor piece of paper and our stencil here now I cannot stress enough before you do this if you've been playing with color burst you want to make sure your work area is clean and you want to make sure your hands are clean the reason why is when you're mixing your colors like I've done over here you don't want to mix any other colors one little drop of any color burst will make this just vibrant color once you went ahead and mixed your colors, we're using green and yellow. We're going to go ahead and take a spatula and we're just going to go ahead and start putting it in the areas we want it. And you're just going to push kind of hard in between those areas. last thing you want to do once you have a good coverage is just take your spatula and make sure you got it even and this is the part where it's kind of fun because you can kind of mix your colors around and get your yellows in with your greens greens in with yellows unless you're trying to in my case with that diamond one I was trying to keep all my colors separate so once you know you have a good coverage and there's no white spots we're gonna go ahead let it dry for just one second and then we're going to go ahead and lift up and we're going to go ahead and let this completely air dry before we cut this down it doesn't take too long once it's air dried we'll go ahead and trim this down and you're going to have a real vibrant piece of paper that you can use for card stocks and scrapbooks whatever it's beautiful so i love this technique that's why i waited till the last um, as you can see i did a ton of different examples for you because it's just one of those fun techniques that um, i really enjoy so i'm going to go ahead and let it dry cut it down and i will show you the finished product so there's six different ways to use the new ken oliver color burst now i'm in love with this product not only does it produce amazing projects but you can use it for a completely different look each time. You can use it the traditional way, do the airbrush look, stenciling, reverse stenciling, stenciling with a special medium, the vinyl technique, or use it with your stamps with embossing or traditionally just with a paintbrush. Now currently Ken Oliver Color Bursts are going for right around $5 a bottle. So for the entire collection, that's gonna be $30 plus shipping and handling. This is an amazing deal because not only is it going to produce amazing projects, but because it's a fine powder, a little bit goes a long way. I've had this product for about a week and I've used it to death on tons of different tests and just checking out what it can do. And I still have a ton left in the bottles. Now, if you're thinking about getting this, I would not wait. I had to go to five different stores to get my colors because either they were out of a certain color or they were completely out of stock. And I've been seeing a ton of people trying to find it. Now, if you go on YouTube, I highly recommend looking at other people's videos because there is a ton of different techniques on what to do. I've seen people dip this in paper to get a nice drip look and the paper absorbs up, it's beautiful. I've seen someone call it ghost effects. So definitely look in YouTube and I'll put some of my favorite videos down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use Ken Oliver's Color Burst and why it has become one of my new favorite things in my craft room. I hope you will end up using it and please share all of your projects with me here in the comments or in my Facebook group. Make sure you don't miss out on any of my craft reviews. You can make sure to subscribe here by clicking subscribe now on your screen. You can also check out my blog over at www.creativeken.com. Make sure you join my Facebook group and like my Facebook page. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and pretty much any other social media you can find. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you get Ken Oliver's Color Burst in your craft room because you are going to be just amazed at the endless possibilities. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching 
And if you want to purchase anything, check below, down below in the description. I'll give you all the links to make it real easy for you. All right, everyone, until next time, thanks for watching and have an amazing crafting day.